respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, is a condition in which the lungs become leaky and fill up with fluid. As a result, oxygen cannot be absorbed into the body, and patients usually don't survive. A special mask had been developed to deliver oxygen at higher pressures and perhaps prevent patients from needing a, a ventilator. Unfortunately, this mask can be quite uncomfortable and can leak substantially, especially at higher pressures. In fact, about half of the patients with ARDS who use the mask require the ventilator anyway. We wondered if a different mask, known as the helmet, might improve patient tolerability. The helmet is a transparent hood that covers the entire head of the patient. The seal is at the neck so that it can tolerate higher pressures without substantial leak. So we conducted a clinical trial where we compared standard face masks to the helmet in order to prevent patients with ARDS needing the ventilator. We found that helmet ventilation reduced the chances of needing a ventilator from 60% to 20%. If we treat five patients with ARDS with the helmet, we can prevent one death. These results were quite surprising and we hope can dramatically change how we care for patients with ARDS. I've worked as a hyperbaric technologist for 32 years. The hood assembly that I have next to me is a device that we use in our day-to-day -day operations. With minimal modification, it can be used as a method of non-invasive ventilation for the patient with COVID-19. In this presentation, it is my intent to demonstrate the minor modifications needed to convert an oxygen treatment hood assembly into a method of non-invasive ventilation for the use in the treatment of the patient with COVID-19. The components of the oxygen treatment hood assembly normally used in hyperbaric oxygen therapy can be modified with connectors available in most hospital respiratory therapy departments. The neck seal at the right of the screen is available in both latex and silicon models. The next ring seen in this slide provides a base for the individual neck seal, the inspiratory tube assembly, and the expiratory tube assembly. The neck seal is cut to the dimensions of the neck of the individual patient. Following are the exhaust gas components or the expiratory gas tubing needed to be assembled. It is suggested that the first attachment to the base is a 90 degree elbow. The purpose of this connector is to provo provide patient clearance taking the exhaust assembly out of the way. An alternative to this connector is to cut a 6 inch length of corrugated oxygen tubing. The next component is a bacterial viral filter. This component is extremely important in the treatment of the COVID-19 patient to ensure that the exhaust from the patient is not aerosolized. The next component is a straight adapter. It allows the attachment of the final component to the exhaust gas tubing, which is the PEEP valve. This is a spring-loaded valve with a range to open at a pressure equivalent to 5 centimeters of water to 20 centimeters of water. In our example, the tube opening of the peep valve is larger and requires an additional adapter. This is the assembled exhaust gas tubing. It is ready to be connected to the bottom of the neck ring. The supply side components are selected to allow titrated high volume flow capable of being adjusted according to the fraction of inspired oxygen desired. As with the exhaust gas assembly, the first connector to the supply side is a 90 degree elbow to allow adjustment of the following components to fa facilitate unobstructed clearance. The six inch section of corrugated 22 millimeter hose can be substituted for the elbow if needed. The next component of the supply side assembly is this connector. 
up to three of these connectors will be assembled in line. This component has a nipple that allows the connection of a gas supply line. This connector allows the attachment of the smaller size of the respiratory components together. At least two of these components are placed in line. The goal is to select the available connectors to allow three gas supply lines to be connected to supply the plot supply side assembly. In the completed assembly, this pre, in this presentation, we have used three of these components due to the availability of parts. The final component in the supply side assembly is a nipple shown above. The use of this connector completes the assembly and allows a third gas line connection while minimizing the length of the supply side assembly. This is a close up view of the final connector. A total of three seven foot lengths of oxygen tubing connect the supply side assembly to the wall mounted regulators. Two of these tubes will, should be connected to oxygen. One should be connected to medical air. By varying the flow on the wall-mounted regulators, this will allow the, the desired FiO2 to be achieved. This is a picture of the completed supply side gas assembly. We have had to deviate from the suggested assembly due to the component availability. The supply side assembled has an additional third nipple connector with an end cap. The completed supply assembly or the completed assembly is ready to be attached to the bottom of the neck ring. Here you see the oxygen treatment hood assembly ring with both assemblies attached. Once the neck seal has been trimmed to the size of the patient's neck, it requires two individuals to lower it around his head and place it comfortably on the patient's neck, like so. Once the hood base is in place, you can now attach the exhaust assembly to one side as shown here in the video. The next step is to attach the oxygen assembly. The oxygen assembly has three lines to it. The three lines themselves are attached to regulators from a wall. Two to oxygen, one to medical air. All right, this is the final step of the oxygen hood or helmet assembly. We carefully place it around the patient's head, clamping it down on all, all around. Now you can see we've modified this hood. We've added four Velcro strips, two in the front and two in the back. Next, we have taken straps with Velcro on it. We've put the Velcro strap right here. We take it underneath the patient's arm, crisscross it around the back so it's secure. And at this point, we should have the oxygen air mixture inflating the hood. In a 2016 study intended to look at a group of 20 or 200 critically ill patients, the oxygen therapy hood assembly made a substantial difference, said pulmonologist John P. Crest, MD, professor of medicine at the University of Chicago and senior author of the study. The university's data and safety monitoring board recommended that we stop the trial early because the helmet consistently demonstrated enhanced results. Among patients with RDS, the helmet uh, in non-invasive ventilation resulted in significant reduction in intubation rates. There was also a statistically significant reduction in the 90-day 90, 90 mortality with this helmet. 
The method of non-invasive ventilation in this video provides a low-cost option that can be used early to assist patients afflicted or affected with COVID-19. Early use, it has been shown to increase the survival rates and conserve the use of ventilators so that they can be used to treat the most serious patients with COVID-19. Additional references are available on request. Send your request to info at Santra, C-E-N-T-R-E, hyperbare, H-Y-P-E-R-B-A-R-E dot com, or tfox194026 at icloud.com. This video was prepared to use as a reference. Innovative thought and critical resource management will allow us to meet critical needs. Thank you for your time and attention.